Hey guys, this week, what women binge? What are you binging? Um, well, right now, Queen Charlotte, the great Ted Lasso, uh, the end of Maisel. Oh my gosh. Oh, really? I haven't watched it. But like, same, same, like, same, same all around. All the things, succession. The things. Oh, not that. Um, I need to go back to that. I did not, while I was away, I have to admit, I did not do Outlander. Uh, I wish I had, but I got kind of bored with it. But I did do you. Bored with Outlander? And I love you. What's happening to you? You was like my favorite show. I think I can't do you. I think you can. There's not that much blood in it. It's more like he's always there. And he's creepy, but he's also dorky. So it's like this weird combination of like creepy dorky. So if I watch the first episode of the first season, is it going to be a yay or a nay for me? It's, I think it'll be a yay. Okay. The first episode's not that I will. I will try it. Yeah. No right. promises. And I, have, I brought you a gift. I had too many things for your birthday, so I held this off. This is for decorating our studio. This is a, to be a permanent fixture on our studio. I'm very excited. And this is the inspiration behind my hair. Just so you know. <laughs> That's a lot of weirdness. <gasps> Right? It's Hannah. It's, Wanting Hannah. To say it. it's Rebecca. It's Rebecca. So I went into my hairdresser, y'all. When I came back from Ottawa, I was like, I need to go blonde again. Because I was like... I love her. I was like a dirty brown blondish, And I was like, okay, I just want to go back to my bright, like, glammy blonde. It's so good. And I was watching Lasso. It was the episode in Amsterdam. Oh, in the boat. And I took a screenshot of... I just took a picture with my phone of the TV and brought it to my hairdresser and was like, do this. So I got the color and it's the cut. Perfect. Yeah, it's not as it's not quite as styled as because this is me well, doing my is, own style. But you you picked the kind of wet and wild look. Yeah, that she had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when the she naturally was in the dry. When she was in the boat. Yeah, that's right. When she had this fallen is in her the more like work day like. And that walk. was a little bit longer. Yeah, she's got a little. Oh my gosh! But I, I thought that would be so cool in her studio, right? She's like, amazing. Rebecca yes. is our saint. We'll put her like we have. We have like Dolly is like our 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 mother figure like our mother mary but and then rebecca's who we want to be when we rebecca grow up. is our yeah is like our saint Teresa. gosh so Did, okay saint, you know this is a saint candle like you yes, normally put yeah. saints on this you'll have to teach me about like all Ca- the catholic catholic things, things. yeah so we have saints and saint rebecca is there here she with is us. she's here with us to so you guys mind. today we have a fun guest yay we have my old friend and i mean my old friend, like we go way back together. Not saying y'all are old. No, but we are. But like, don't tell him that. But uh, we have Joey Lawrence here. Ah, insert we, all the teen squeals. Yes, he's got a new podcast. We'll talk about. He's got a new baby. We'll talk about. And uh, yeah, we've we have a long, long history together. We'll get into in a minute. This you ready? Is awesome. Oh, I'm not ready. I'll never be ready. But let's, here we go. <laughs> let's bring in Joey Lawrence. Joe, welcome, welcome to our studio. Even though you're, where are you? Thank in, you so much. Are you in Thank Cali? You so much. How are you? Good. Are you in Cali right now? Yeah. Yep. In California. So yeah, tell us where. Where are you? I'm in are Nashville. You down, yeah, you're down in Nashville. Yeah, Nashville. Nashville. Yeah. Moved here two plus years ago. Yeah. Coming up on three. Yeah. Long I know. time. You've been moving all over the place. When we were doing Melissa and Joey, you moved back east to Connecticut, right? <sighs> and then you moved back to Tahoe, and then you moved to Nashville, and you're like a you're like a United <laughs> States traveler. I love well, this. my husband movie. has never been. He can't stay still for more than two years, as you know. And uh, he has been trying to drag me to the south since I've known him. Actually, okay. not the first few years, only after then. So right. 21 years together and he finally gets me to the south. So here That's I am. Okay. But you're having a good time, right? Yeah. I mean, I've gained a little weight from all the fried chicken and biscuits. But yeah, you know, <laughs> worst things have happened. I mean, the sweet tea. What else? Do we what do we got rolling? Here? Oh, so you're happy. The ranch on oh, the salad darn. dressing and the croutons and the Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I put on a happy 20 pounds. You have yeah. joy in your life again. <laughs> the worst. It's not just kale and juices. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. And wait, you, know, you, the- you have a new baby. I do. I do have a new one. Yes, she's uh, she's four months. Uh, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Yeah, n- another girl. I, I, that's all I make. It's girls. Uh, so hello, three, I have three, three boys. You have three. We have, okay, here's the craziest thing, right? We have such right. weird parallel lives. Like, we were both four, we were about four years old when we met on the same audition. Mm-hmm. What was the audition? Mm-hmm. Um, God, I don't know. Little Shots? It was one of those crazy cattle calls in New York that we were in the elevator. You know, that, what, was the, what was the audition? Was um, it Little Shots with Ron Howard? Or was it in? Because that's when I met Soleil. Yeah, no, no, it was in, it was on a commercial shoot in New York. In New York, okay, and then, okay. And then it was little shots again. Oh yeah, but it was, uh, like our remember? moms became buddies and yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we had those. Remember those cattle calls? Remember in New yeah. York when you 
like, you know, you, thousands I mean, for, of kids. For me, we had to drive from like Philly and we'd go into the city and you take, or we'd drive to Trenton, take the train in and then take cabs. And then remember those old creaky elevators? It would be like, yeah. like you know how you made it up to that 35th floor. And then they, you got out and then they, they took your Polaroid and they yeah. stapled it to You had to know your security you number, your, your social security number. Like kids these days yeah. don't know. So, like you had to write in your social security number when you showed up somewhere. So I know mine. Oh, I've known mine since I was about five years old. <laughs> like, oh yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, no, it, it's crazy. Yeah, you had to have all sorts of identifications to audition. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, it's, it's wild. He comes yeah, from a family is. of boys. He's one of three. Right. The yeah. oldest of three. And then, uh, and then I'm like mainly girls in my family. That's right. The and one then boy. He goes ahead and well, he uh, he had a, he had a, an Auburn connection there, and I have the Alabama connection. That's um, right. And I'm from yeah. Alabama. Yeah, so nice. she's from Alabama. Fantastic. Yeah, we Fantastic. all have three kids. Although she's got two of two I've girls, got a mixture. A, two girls and a boy. But you have two girls and a boy. Okay, very nice. Yeah, very it's nice. Fine. Yeah, well, but yeah, you got the three girls like now. Journey, you're just you know? you're just catching Life is up an to me. journey. I'll tell you that much. What? Yeah. No, you got the three girls now, so you're like catching up to me now with the kids. You gonna have any more? Or is this? No, it? I, I mean, I don't think so. Are you, Maybe I, I don't know. Are you I at capacity, know. as my husband says, as Mark says, we're at capacity. I feel like that. You know. You know. It's all. <laughs> well, it's, you're it's only four months moment. into this new one, <laughs> so it's moment by moment. But you know, I mean, I don't know. You know, you never know what the future holds. But I mean, I just, uh, yeah. I mean, it's great. You know, it. it, it it's so cool doing it at this age because, um, you know, I have such a different perspective than the first time around, you know, at 29, 30, which is not young by any means, but you have a much different perspective on things. Everything freaks you out. You're nervous about mm -hmm. everything. You don't know what it is. You know, every cry is like, what's wrong? You know, it's such a different thing coming at it, you know, at 47, you know, and two kids later and two teenagers for that. Oh, matter. that's the other thing. You know, I'm two days older than him. So we're oh. like, our birthdays are like exactly the same, except that he's a Taurus Aminaries. So well, happy yeah. birthday. We have all these weird like combination things that that go on in our lives. We both had before Melissa and Joey, we both had had two successful shows prior to that and or three. Right. Really? I mean, yeah, um, yeah. but we yeah. so so we I don't know if Amanda, do you know how Joey like, can you tell her about the Tonight Show situation? Yeah, I mean, the Tonight Show. Well, that's sort of, you know, we were doing all these commercials in New York, right? And you know, you, you, I had done a certain amount of them the, that first year. I, I forget how many it was, but it was quite a bit, you know, like maybe like 30 of them or something. And there, so I was all over TV, you know, like doing these, these commercials that yeah. were back then commercials, you know, were like a big deal, right? You get a national Coca-Cola commercial or a, or a, um, you know, Kool-Aid commercial, Tonka trucks, Tylenol, these big commercials yeah. that ran and were very, were very popular. So the Carson Booker saw that and I was like the kid that was all over these things. And then the, I had to audition for Johnny Carson. So I went out there and I auditioned for the show. I sang and danced because I didn't no know. No pressure. I, <laughs> I, I tapped and sang and I had been tapping about, you know, maybe like six months. I think my parents uh, started me with tap lessons like at about four, four and a half. So by the time I was five, which is when I was out there um, and they booked me, you know, for that following Friday night and I was supposed to do one song and go on for like, you know, three, four minutes for a little interview. And, and, uh, but I had a second song prepared and, uh, they said, you know, you won't need it, but you'll have it. So zippity doo doo was the second one to bring it home. And, um, <laughs> and I went out there and Carson, you know, obviously calls audibles all the time because he's Carson. He was genius. Nobody in late night. I mean, I don't even mm. know what late night is now. And I'll just go on a record saying that, but it's certainly not what Johnny Carson was. Or well, David with Letterman, the writer strike, it's all gone right now anyway. Right. <laughs> Not no, nobody's going right now, but no, but I mean, like when we were growing up, you know, you, you had Carson and Letterman and these guys that were that really knew the art form in essentially what it was meant to be, right? right? And people were excited about it, and it was it was must see TV at night, you know. Yeah. So anyway, went out went out there, and I guess it went really well, and Johnny was having a great time, and I said a couple of these iconic things that are on like the best of tapes and all these things. So he had me come back and do the second song and do another portion of an interview, and I was on there for seventeen minutes. It was in our world wow, going on a that's tonight a show it's like it's you know mel that's, that's like two crazy. segments at least two segments that's like huge. normally you don't get that no no i mean normally you, you you do all this prep and you're out there for like five minutes yeah. you know six minutes yeah you know? so 17 minutes is massive and then you know we crushed it joan rivers comes out and her on her hands and knees and goes i can't follow that and you know that's how it sort of started because nbc literally like the next that was on a friday monday uh nbc brandon tartikoff who was the genius running nbc at the time called my mom, called my parents and said, you know, we'd love to sign them to an overall deal. So, and that's and how then, you got on. Give me a break. Is that right? That's how I a break. Yeah. I did two pilots, which was scamps with Bob Denver. And, uh, <laughs> and, and it was written by Sherwood Schwartz who did the Brady bunch and Gilligan's Island. Oh, wow. And that didn't go. 
And then I tested for little shots. They were, they just brought me right to the test stage for that. This is how is I learned. That's how I learned to ride a bike was Ron Howard yeah, had this audition. Oh yeah. Oh, that's right. You See, I could, I, I think know. that I didn't actually do it. We were in a church parking lot. I remember this because my friend, my best friend, Kimmy's kids, go, they, they, this is the church that they go to now, but we were in the church parking lot trying to ride a bike. Everyone's like trying to learn how to ride a bike because we had to ride bikes in this thing for some reason. Yeah, that's right. I made all exactly. friends that day. Yeah. They flew exactly. us to LA and like, I'm doing this screen test and it was crazy. And there's all these Hollywood, all these kids that became like big Hollywood stars there. That's yeah. wild. No, it was, it was, it was crazy. And I didn't know how to ride a bike either. And I remember the pressure. I was so nervous about that. And, uh, <clears throat> it was Ron Howard's first directing job believe yeah, in television, yeah, yeah. in television. So, uh, and then it didn't go, they put all this money into it and it was, a, it was an amazing pilot, by the way. It really was. I wait, mean, did you actually, but wait, sorry, wait, you didn't book the pilot or you did book the pilot. I did book it. The pilot didn't go, oh, Okay. It didn't okay. Go. but it looked amazing. They, we got to see it. They had a screening Wow. and it was like, it looked like Goonies. Do you think I mean, this it was on, Goonies. Is this that on YouTube was, that now? Was the show. Is it on, huh? is it on YouTube or anything now? I don't know. I know that I'll never forget it's it. It's gotta be out I forget the theater that they had it at, but they premiered it and they screened it for everybody. And I remember going to that, you know, I was like five and a half, six. So, but I remember it. Oh my gosh. And, we got to get this. Then, we got to find look it up. Yeah. yeah. We got to find that. Like that, that's got to be out there. Cause I, I don't know if, I don't remember if Soleil was in it, but like. Soleil was in it. She was in it. I guess oh, I yeah. couldn't learn to ride a bike. So I didn't get to be in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. that yeah, Soleil, Soleil was in it. Um, uh, b- believe it or not, uh, Jeff Cohn was in it, who was Chunk and Goonies. Yeah. He was in it. Um, yeah. Wow. But it was, it was essentially, it was essentially Goonies before Goonies. I yeah. mean, it was before Goonies. It was 1981. So 82. You Did know? you guys so, ride um, bikes a lot in this? Because apparently there was a big bike riding element. <laughs> was a huge bike riding element. There was a whole sequence like Goonies. We got around on our bikes. Okay. So believe it or not, Soleil, I'll never forget this because you know, we've watched it periodically. I mean, like when I was a kid, we'd watch it throughout the years, you know, my mom loved it. So, but her, one of her favorite lines, one of the best lines in that whole thing was she never had a bike. Okay. Oh. So in the, in the, in the pilot, and we would always cruise past her and ride by her. And there was this really cute line where she's walking by in the haphazardly way she does it. And she's like, we're like, yeah, we're going to meet up. We're going to, we're going to go to Smokey Joe's. Who was like the villain. That was like the, the, <laughs> I guess like the, uh, the antagonist. And, uh, we rode away and she's there and she's like, I got to get a bike. She didn't have one. <laughs> so oh. it was really cute. It was really, I'm telling you, it was way ahead of its time and uh, really was like a Goonies before Goonies. So. Well, if you run but into just, Ron Howard, tell him to release it if it's not already. I know. They should. We got to find really this cool thing. It would be a thing to put up somewhere, especially like on Peacock or something. Some yeah. Stuff. That'd be super fun. That's the kind of content people are looking for now. Can you imagine like watching everybody when they're like six years old? That It'd would be, be so cool. cool. It'd be crazy. It'd, It'd be, be crazy. awesome. But yeah. you, everyone can go find your Carson uh, uh, stuff on YouTube for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's all over the place. Yeah. yeah you can, you can you, YouTube that. Yeah, and then, of course, sure. there was the Blossom Years. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, Yeah, it was crazy, man. It was Give Me a Break and Blossom and, and, then, um, and then Brotherly Love and then uh, yeah. American yeah. Dreams and then um, M- Melissa and Joey. And then Melissa so, and yeah. Joey, where we had so much fun. Wait, real quick on the Blossom thing. Did, did we ever talk about the fact that I auditioned for six at the same time as I was auditioning for Clarissa? You did tell me that story. <laughs> yes, you did. You did. You did. And Jenna Bonnoy is a dear friend of both of ours. And actually she lives, I think she lives in Nashville too. She's been reaching out to she me. In, she do, I think she, yes, she does. Or, yes, she, I know she did for a long time. She may have actually moved back to California, but I think that she did for a long time. I think she's Nashville. back and forth yeah. a little bit or she's in the area. I'm not so is sure she she's still acting. Kids. No, uh, she is acting, but she's more, oh, she segued into something. I want to say directing or writing. Oh, good for her. Um, but we'll, we'll have to have her on the show. And I'm, I'm actually doing Mayim's uh, uh, podcast. Have you done hers yet? I have not done Mayim's, no. What's it called? No, Brain but I, Power? But I will. I did Mayim's show for her. I did Call Me Cat. I oh, did yeah. an episode of that uh, last season. I know, you know, it, it, I mean, it's, I guess it's not coming back or whatever, but last season I did an episode, the first the first episode of season two. Okay. And you guys were in the yeah. Old Navy commercial not too long ago, a few years ago. Was oh, that yeah. Super Bowl? Yeah, Old Navy, right. Yeah. I know. And they're always talking about a Blossom reboot. I guess, you know, look, uh, there's a lot of chatter about that now, especially because she's done with her show. And, Everybody wants these yeah. reboots, huh? That's like- they do. They do. So I mean, they have a script. It's really, it's really good. And, uh, you know, you know, we'll see. We'll see what uh, happens. I don't well, know. That'd be if fun. Blossom can happen, Sabrina can happen. I know, but I don't know that we want Sabrina. <laughs> Just put it out I mean, there. It'd be a lot fun. of people are begging, a lot of people, and you know this is true, are saying like, Melissa and Joey's got to come back. And, well, you know, that was, that's, 
I would that one. So I have to say, when people huh. are like, "What's Even our favorite coasters. character?" Oh yeah, our coasters are Melissa and Joey. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> when there people are like, "What's your like? Which is your favorite character to play?" And everyone expects me to say Sabrina. A few people might expect Clarissa. You've always she was said so cool, Mel. But it's Mel because she was such a freaking. <laughs> she was such a hot a mess, fun, flawed, hot mess, dumpster garbage pile of fun to play. Mm-hmm. Like she was right. drunk. She was sexy. She was like. She you, were, you were you were drunk. You were horny. You were motherly. You were you know <laughs> single and crazy. And yeah, I mean, I got to say honestly, some funny, funny lines. Made, those characters were both really, really. Um, you know, they were fallible, and they and they failed a lot most of the time. And I think they they were super relatable because of that. And I I love seeing characters that are really likable but also fail a lot. Yeah, and, and that's and she was so did. flawed. That's what I loved about Mel. She was so flawed. So Amanda, you know when you're sick and you're like trying to find what these symptoms mean, and you stumble down a big old TikTok rabbit hole full of questionable advice from so-called experts. Yeah. Um. Let me just tell you, having just had the flu. There were many, many suggested remedies on uh, the old TikToks. Or like your group chat or whatever, right? Everybody like tries to tell you what you got, what's going wrong, what you should do. But you need to hear it from trusted professionals, not just random people on the internet. Yeah, that's why I'm very grateful for ZocDoc. They help you find expert doctors and medical professionals that specialize in the care that you need and deliver the type of experience that you want. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed. They take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Millions of people use ZocDoc's free app to find and book a doctor in their neighborhood who's patient-reviewed and fits their needs and schedule just right. Go to ZocDoc.com WWB and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash W-W-B. ZocDoc dot com slash W-W-B. Thanks, ZocDoc, for sponsoring What Women Binge. You know, I, I don't know if I told you this, but we had we had Taylor on the show mm-hmm. a few months back. Yeah. And I watched And she's doing something else now, right? What she did, she's, she's here. Totally different, right? She lives in Nashville. She works for the Humane Society. She's saving saving animals one right. puppy at a time. Right. Yeah. She's doing right. great things. And she's still acting, but she's not she's not really She just did pursuing. a young Sheldon. Not too long ago. She does ago. do a lot of young Sheldon. That's true. She okay. she plays his college sort of buddy on young Sheldon. So oh, okay, I actually directed okay, her okay, in an cool. episode of Sheldon. So that's funny. Yeah. But she cool. so she goes out to LA once in a while for that, but she's more dabbling in it and I, I don't know if she's sure she wants to continue on right now, but um, but then we also had Nick Robinson on the show, who was who's blown up in huge ways with Love Simon and Jurassic Park and all these other um, oh, yeah. big movies he's well, done. Nicky blew up when he was doing the show. Yeah. I mean, he was you know it was like he got these major monumental career sort of landmark you know moments while he was doing the show for us. Yeah, so. yeah, he got. Uh, it's funny. I just looked at his IMDb page the other day, and it doesn't mention Melissa and Joey on it. <laughs> You know, oh, no. I gotta say, like, I know that's always such a pitfall for these younger performers that, that that don't really have a perspective on things, you know, where, you know, and it happened a lot. I used to see these American Idol alums when American Idol was really meaningful, you know, like, like yeah. when it actually launched people like today. I mean, it's still on this enjoyable show, but I don't think it's an arguable point even that it's not launching like the Kelly Clarksons and yeah. you know, Carrie Underwood's like it did. Anymore. Yeah. No, right. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, the Carrie Underwood's, it's just not launching those people anymore. But it's still great to watch. It's fun entertainment and all that stuff. However, it never it always killed me early on when this show was the biggest show on the planet, 40 million people a week. And as soon as they would win it and then they wanted – if they went on to do other things, and there were a few of them went on to do great things and win awards and you know and, and, and become actors, and they would be like – they literally wanted nothing to do with the show. Like they wouldn't yeah. even mention it. Yeah, you know? yeah. And you're going, why – look, that means something to the fans who have watched your journey. Yeah. The reason why people are going to see you in a movie is because you were on this show. Yeah, right. And that gave you the platform to have a voice and to show people how talented you were so that you could do the things that God put you down here to do. So for me, it never makes any sense to me why you don't, why you never want to mention how you got your start because that's the where the journey begins. But like is this... That's- is this sort That's of like important. because of our age now that we have that perspective or where we are in our careers being veterans of the business now? Like, do you feel like or because it's like, did, did you kind of disconnect yourself from from like the woe thing and all that, th- like the kind of the things you were known for? Not really. I mean, I couldn't escape that. You know, yeah. I, I look there were I wanted to go on and do other things. 
You know what I mean? And right. I was excited about doing things past that and growing up and becoming a, you know, a man and not having to play little kid parts and stuff, yeah. you know, but I was very, I was always thankful for that moment, you know, be, because that was the journey that got me to where, you know, that, that's allowed me to do this just like you, you know, and look, yeah. there's ups and downs. It's a springboard sure, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that I want to accomplish that I don't know if I ever will, you know, a lot of things that I have left that I feel creatively that I want to do. Um, but certainly being thankful for the work, you know, and the right. continued opportunity to work. That's a very important thing that you well, have do you, to keep perspective. Do you think that that comes from being an East Coast actor too? Like um, that we are both sort of more interested in being working actors than like the huge fame and, and fortune? Yeah, look, to me, the fame part of it was never important, right? We didn't think about that growing up mm -mm. because there was no... You know, to, to, today, fame is, is the driving factor, especially because of social media, right? You're famous yeah. because you're famous. Like, your, fa your fame is being famous. Like, it's not based off, especially in the social media world, it's not based off a lot of talents or individual accomplishments. It's you're famous because you're famous, and the end goal right. is fame. That's how you generate a platform for advertising and to make money and monetize everything. I never thought about that. I don't, yeah. I don't think you did either. But I think it was that just was like, an East Coast I love thing. to do this, and I was able to do it, and the fact that, I realized at some point that I was making lots of money doing it and it was really cool, you know, to be able to take care of my family and go on trips and do these things that, and enjoy life to the fullest. That was just a byproduct yeah. of being able to do something that I love to do. And you had to have a skill set. We yeah. talk about it all the yeah. time. Even on, we just got done doing an episode on our pod with like the brothers, you know, and we talked about, you know, you, you had to have a skill set and you had to be good. And yeah. we were we were growing up, man. If you weren't good, you were like, out the door. You were, you were cut. You were out. Like there even was while no, you're like, shooting, you'd be shooting the you'd be shooting a commercial and they'll replace you. You'd be shooting a sitcom, they replace you. <laughs> like yeah. like in the like middle that. of the yep. moment. Yeah. You show wow. up at a table read. I'm convinced that you show up. Look, I remember our table read for Melissa and yeah. Joey, right? People were excited about the show. That was one of the most, but after that table read, because you brought your A game and so did I. And we've all been at table reads when the name cast shows up and they, they're not prepared. Yeah. And that table read blows. It sucks. Yeah. And people all get nervous because they're about and to spend a lot of money. And they rewrite and they rewrite to try to make it work because they don't think it worked because people didn't prepare yeah. and people don't have the, I don't know, the, the gift of kind of like reading it, like going in a cold read and actually being able to deliver. That's right. We had, do you remember them? People were laughing for hour i mean it took us we had like a 15 minute laugh spread yeah. in that in that yeah. table read do you remember that <laughs> yes that's right we were so long that script that show was so long it was so they had to cut so much yeah. because people were literally dying and it gave such a vote of confidence to that network to give us a shot and that really paved the way yeah. for our you know 100 plus episodes because yeah. mel and i started that like nailing it we came yeah. in and we crushed it and that was a mentality that you have to have it was an appreciation it was an accountability and a mentality and that's what drives you to longevity i believe because yeah. you're going to have to yeah. down but you have to have those three things and a lot of young people today there's a lot of excuses made when they mess up there's a lot of excuses they get 12 13 chances and there's never really a work ethic that gets developed. You know, you had to have one when we were growing up. They didn't treat us like kids. Yeah. We but were, also no, didn't have the protections that are in place today. No, because not really. Yeah, all we worked had... really hard. <laughs> in Florida. We actually we met up in Florida work. a few times. Like, you came down to what? Florida when you were dating, let's see, which one was it? Kelly Martin or Jennifer Love Hewitt? I can't remember. <gasps> Maybe both. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, because we buried a time capsule at Nickelodeon. What? Which, oh, my by gosh. the way... If I'm not mistaken, is that they're going to either unearth that this year? No, no, I think no. It's no, no, that was a 50 year. Hold on. We're not. Oh, it was 50? Yeah, oh I thought down. it was 30. No, no, okay. no. Slow down. <laughs> I think it's a 50. Oh, my God. I hope it's a 50 year time capsule. <laughs> We're not ready I know, for that yet. I, somebody, somebody reached out on social media and said, I think it's being unearthed this year oh. because it's the 30th year because it was 93. Well, her husband so, used to work at Nick and he'll yeah, know. Well, so no. he's going to look it up. He actually wanted me. Do you know that the original plate that covered it was on sale recently? Um, no. for uh, So apparently you've got like 10 more years. Oh, we got like 10 more, 10 more years? 2042. Okay, 2042. All right. So it was 92. Okay, I thought it was 93. Ooh. So it was 92 and it was a 40 year. Okay. Okay. But um, I remember we both, you put in a copy of Blossom, I put in a copy of Clarissa, but I remember my Clarissa guys telling me that our tape was different than yours and ours might preserve, but I don't think yours did. 
So we'll see what happens. Oh, I'm sure. No, I'm sure. It didn't. <laughs> we also I think like you could put a woe hat in there too, like a woe oh, hat. Oh yeah. Or and I think I I got a uh, disposable camera and took up a ton of pictures. So we'll see if that's, if that's even developable. You know they had developable? to move it though, because Nickelodeon Studios or Universal Florida doesn't. Is it in New York now? No, it's in uh, California and Burbank. Okay. So they've moved this time capsule numerous times. Like when they renovated Universal, mm-hmm. they moved it. So. I don't really? know if it's ever accidentally popped open. I don't know how these things work. I haven't. I don't know. Do you remember Michael Malley hosted that? Oh my gosh! Yeah, dude. Yeah. Young Michael oh Malley. Gosh. Good. Yeah, and I think he's got. I, I believe he has like a new show or something coming out. I really I am love, sad you didn't I get that. Grow he's Craig. so funny. I know. He's so, no, Michael Malley's so funny. He, Mike's was, great. he was funny when he was doing like you know he was just starting out dude, doing like the hosting thing you know for like Nickelodeon clearly right but. It was crazy. He was so funny. He's always been funny. He's I really, really I funny. Really He's a good guy. All those, uh, I, I really enjoyed those people from Nickelodeon coming through the studio down there. It was always really fun when like really other shows or, or guest stars like you would come through. And um, wait, I have to ask you a personal question. I don't think I've ever asked you. So you okay. dated Kelly Martin, who was known right. at the time for Life Goes On. And she was on the show mm-hmm. Christy and she's a big Hallmark oh, star. Yeah, so yeah. she's one of my best friends and you broke her heart. Why did you do that? <laughs> I, I don't know i mean i guess it didn't go the way she wanted it to or you know the way that she thought it was going to or the way that i thought it was go- i don't know you know way you're to put like, him on the I, spot i don't even know what this was i think it was like 91 or 92 yeah it was, so was very like, early 15 you guys so. were little i liked her though you introduced Actually, me to her and i I'll loved her and she's was, my best friend. part of it was that she was older than me and she could drive and oh. i couldn't drive so the few <gasps> you used her we out, the few times that we went out she had to drive. She had a 92 uh, white 325i BMW coupe. Oh, fancy. With tan interior. Because I'm a car guy, right? So I love this car. I had that and car, but in red when I first moved to LA. That must be the LA car. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. So it was a really cool car. And she had to drive me around. like because And I felt horrible. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this is so weird. Like, cause I couldn't drive. I wasn't old enough. You and know? Joey is so. a car guy. He's a car guy and a shoe guy. Oh, yeah. okay. And watches. Yeah. And watches. And watches. That's he right. loves his watches. What's the one you got me? You uh, hooked me up with them for Mark, uh, the Lockman. Is that what it's called? Those are cool yes. watches. They're like cool watch. is that the one he wears all the time. Yeah, he's no. a great. He's a small watchmaker out of out of New York, but they make great watches. Yeah, great really watches. cool watches because they kind of like wrap around. It's almost like the way my Fitbit fits, like it sits on your wrist right. in oh. the right way. Yeah, it's got that dome. It's really yeah. cool. Yeah, so Joe yeah, turned me on to those. Remember that? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's because awesome. you had gotten one for our first AD, who went on to be a director, con- Robbie Countryman, and I was like, well, that's I need right. to get one for Mark. Yeah, that's right. That's that was right. super no, cool. Robbie's great, man. He's great. Yeah, we I love, love him. Robbie, right? He's still working up a storm, dude. I'm so happy yeah. to see him doing stuff. Yeah, he's busy. Yeah. So uh, tell me about your podcast now with your brothers. The Broly Love Pod. Uh, well, you know, everyone's wanted us to do a reality show for years, right? Yeah. Because um, you, you guys know, are characters. Because no we've, we've all been on camera together as siblings a lot, but no one's ever seen us, you know, kind of how we actually – um, our inner dynamics, how we relate to each other, which is very different than, you know, scripted TV. They're three right? very well, different people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, we didn't want to do that. Um, we actually, we have a new TV show that we're doing together, but it's a scripted show. And that's with the, with, that's with the Wedding Crashers team. It's fantastic. It's a single camera. It's called Lawrence House. It'll be out next year. It's, it's killer. I do mean, you need me so to direct? Funny. I know you love it when I direct you. Do you want me to direct sure you? you? Yeah, yeah. We got, we got Steve. <laughs> Steve, Steve Pink directed our pilot. He's our he's one of our showrunners who's great. Steve Pink is, I mean, amazing, right? Wrote uh, Gross Point Blank and High Fidelity, yeah. directed Hot Tub Time Machine and wrote that. He's fantastic. It's super irreverent, uh, very, very funny, totally scripted, um, really kick-ass. But the reality thing sort of kept following us around. So we said, you know what, maybe the best way to do that is to do a podcast because we can have everybody come to our dinner table, which is essentially what it is because it's the podcast about nothing, which is what everyone said it is, which is great. Uh, it's literally about nothing. And and we just talk about and shoot the shit and we talk about things and know, and see how we actually relate to each other. And uh, man, it's come out of the gate and we didn't really think anything of it other than just like, I don't know, we'll give it a shot, you know? Um, well, I know that you love working with me. Like, but I'm a far distant second to his brothers. He just <laughs> no, wants to work with his brothers. That's, you know, that's fair. I love working with you. You know that. So if you ever want to do Mel and Joey again, we can definitely Yeah, talk or I mean, uh, my fake fiance too. My fake fiance is, that's how we start. So like my mom and I were producing this uh, movie for, after Holiday yeah. in Handcuffs came out with me and Mario, ABC Family wanted another movie. And so we had the script, My Fake Fiance. And 
we looked at Joey and we're like, we have never worked together and we wanted to for so long. Let's do this. So we did my fake yep. fiance together. And then yep. what's so funny is like the network wasn't sure that they, before we ever were on camera together, they were kind of like, I don't think this is going to work with the two of them. <laughs> and then my mom's like, just wait, just wait. And my mom was right. And then the next thing you know, they're like, we need to develop a TV show. Instant chemistry. Yeah. So it was like it was. instantly we got a new show. And But my fake fiance is hilarious because. Great. It's so great. What's the, it's how so do you great. describe the premise um, of it? Um, it was just, it was, it, it was such a fabulous, look, it was such a fabulous opportunity for two people to come together who have a very similar energy. And, and that's what, that's what makes it work. It's just that you and I have a similar energy. You well, know, neither we of us, a, neither of us drink caffeine and this is how we behave. <laughs> I was going to say both of y'all are like energizer bunnies and you feed off each other. I can totally see it. Exactly right. Look, it was one of the coolest sets ever. Uh, especially Melissa and Joey, because it started at the top with Mel and I, there was this energy and it started at the top and we always brought every rehearsal. There was never one of those ones where we came sloughing in, you know, half baked or, or, you know, tired. And we didn't, every rehearsal was like, we're going to nail this. We're going to nail this. We're going to nail this. And that was contagious. And it really yeah. is. It starts at the top. And yeah. I think that we set that tone. I didn't even, we didn't even really know that about each other. Until, until yeah. fake fiance, yeah. when, when we had that, you know, but mm -hmm. it was just, that's what made it. Well, just it's that work out. ethic. It's that East Coast work ethic. Because I have to say, like, I think our friends that grew up in California, they were going on red carpets and they're all seeing celebrities left and right. And we didn't really have that. We saw each other, but we didn't, you know, I might be it's like, it. oh, there's Joe on that commercial or there's my friend Sarah right. Michelle Gellar on a soap opera or there, you know. It wasn't glamorous. Like, it wasn't glamorous. It was, it was just your friends popping up in your, in your, in your face. Like it would be your feed, but like right. on your TV or. Yeah. So yeah, the, so, the other, the other F word, the other yeah, F word. Yeah, your yeah, yeah. Your feet, your <laughs> face would show up on your, yeah. So it was yeah. like, um, you know, it seemed like all of us were more interested in the work. And then, totally. as, but because we didn't quite get the fame part of it, really. I mean, we might have, right. in second grade, I was known as the Rice Krispies girl. But, you know, that was also right. a little bit embarrassing in a way. <laughs> right. Were but, you snap, crackle, or pop? I'm kidding. No, yeah. I had to play piano to them. And you know how great I am at piano. Never done it. You are great. But... Fantastic. Amazing <laughs> piano. So good. <laughs> when I fake it on TV. Yeah. But, right. um, but yeah, so it's, I mean, and then, and we both did Dancing with the Stars. And there's so many, and now we both have podcasts. And you have three girls yeah. and I have three boys. And Well, you did, you did the Masked Singer too, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah, you did it last year. I did. I did. Oh, which did one it. were you? The Walrus. Maybe no, it was uh, the, you, walrus. the Walrus. Was, oh, yeah. awesome! I, I love I that show. Don't get, I don't get how I don't get. I never watched that show. I never. I mean, I, I appreciate like it's been great. Everybody loves it. I never had watched that show. So they they had been asking me to do it, and then they said, "Listen, it's it, you know, you come in here and and, and it's going to be late in the game." And I was like, "What do you mean late in the game? I didn't understand anything." Like, yeah, they had already had twelve rounds. Some somebody comes in as an alternate or something. Yeah, yeah. And then, well, it's the weirdest thing it's to so me. Like, it just... It's confusing to explain, but like, yeah. I, I actually watched your whole season the night before I went on just to learn what the hell oh, am I did? doing? Yeah, I okay. hadn't seen it. And so yeah. I watched, somehow I skipped an episode and I was like, wait, I think Joey was on this season. And I guess the episode that you were on, I skipped. So I had to go back and be like, where where was Joey? And I went back and I was like, it's... oh, that's, I skipped that episode. But I binge watched the whole season eight to be like, yeah, okay. I want to know how this show works. Because it is confusing. Yeah, I should have done that because I had no clue. I was like, what is this? Yeah, it's yeah, like this... three people go on. Two right. people get unmasked that night, mm -hmm. and like well, so two can. They don't always. Oh, oh well. This season, I think the season nine that I was on, they had this bell where they would see yes, people. Which but I was not a fan of the bell. That thing. was a new thing, though. They hadn't right. done that before, and I wonder if they'll bring that to next season. My but, kids are huge mass singer fans. So yeah, we I watch tortured her. She didn't oh. know when I was going to be on or what was happening, and she it really was not it. nice. This girl does not do well with secrets. I do not. How weird is it? All that, all those black hoods and the, the gloves. Oh, the, and the, the visor. I still haven't posted any of the pictures. You of need from to. That. I know the sweatshirt that says "Don't talk to me." Mark was like, "Bring that yeah. home for me. Bring that home." <laughs> yeah, it's so creepy. And like, I I came there and I I guess my sweatpants were like a little short. They were like shorter sweatpants, so you could see my ankles. Oh, you could they see your to, skin. Like, tape my ankles because they like we can't see anything. I was yeah. like, what? This is crazy. They don't know how to know you're going to identify you by your ankle. Yeah, by your skin. Well, it's your skin tone can be it's a the giveaway. Skin tone, but I mean, yeah. like, really. Oh, I yeah, was it's like, weird. okay. I was like, I have to okay. wear I didn't know the glove thing. Like, I understand, like, covering my face, but the gloves? Like, in That's case you mean. recognize my hands? hands? Yeah. Uh oh, I know whose hands those are. I no, know whose leg hair oh, that is. Right. It's the, it's the I don't color know. There's some skin. people out there, y'all. Yeah. They yeah, end up in our DMs a lot. But you know what's funny is like it's not really a game show, but they they have serious game show rules. Like, you seriously <laughs> cannot tell anyone, you cannot. Right show anyone right. anything of you right. cannot record anything like it is so serious the rules of the privacy on that whole thing right. but it's like great. for what purpose because there's not we're not winning money <laughs> we're, no one's win. it's not a charity it's not like wheel of fortune when i won 1.30 you know 
1.04 million, I don't know how you say that, one million forty thousand dollars for on Wheel of Fortune. But yeah. that I get because like there's a massive amount of money being paid out. Right. But like this, there's not money being paid out. So I don't understand what the what the game yeah. show element of it is. It's just fun. You know that you know that I also won Wheel of Fortune the first time they ever did a celebrity Wheel of Fortune back in the mid nineties. And it was my grandmother's favorite show, and <laughs> I won. But back then, the prize money was obviously much lower. But yeah. I think I won, it was either twenty five or fifty thousand. But I oh, won. Nice. Wow. Isn't that funny? Oh, it yeah. went to you, huh? It went to you or charity? It, no, it went to charity. Oh, okay. Yeah. But that's yeah. a lot. But, that's but crazy. there wasn't an opportunity to win like a million. Like yeah. you kicked ass. No, you know I, what I mean, I, but, I, I, but, mine was so it, accidental. <laughs> oh no, no, you were great. But I'm saying that, like, yeah, back then they had it was like a it was a much smaller version of what you did, but it yeah. was a celebrity driven yeah. one. And I was on there like in the mid '90s, and my, and my Mimi was so thrilled that I, I was bet. doing it. I bet. And she was like teaching me because she could crush it. I used to watch that with her when I was growing up. Yeah. She knew everything. She could solve those puzzles like like it was too crazy. Well, that's so the thing. When, I, when I won it, it was one of her proudest moments. I swear to God, I love that. that. Her- that's amazing. Yeah. I love that. We were just talking um, the other day to uh, Beth Broderick from Sabrina, and we were saying like people always wanted to be guest stars on that because their kids watch it. But like, I guess if you're going to be on Wheel of Fortune, like your grandma, your aunt, oh. everybody's going to love it, right? Oh yes. yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, that's no, fun. it was great. It was great. No, you you did you did great on that. Thank great you. That. Well, yeah. okay, so everyone's got to check out it's Brotherly Love Podcast, right? Right. All right, I got to ask you our yes, season you can seven our YouTube channel, which is official Brotherly Love Pod. Or you and can your watch Instagram. It. You, know, you, can, you can listen to us on Spotify. Or I, what? Your Instagram is really funny too. That you've been doing a lot with your brothers. Yeah. Well, we have we have our our individual Instagrams, right? Like the at Joey Lawrence and at Matthew Lawrence and Andy. But then we have our our uh, Brotherly Love Pod Instagram page too. Which yeah. Is great. And we have our TikTok. Uh, the Brotherly Love Pod TikTok is. Oh, I gotta check too. that Actually, out. The pods doing really well. We just broke into the um, into the top uh, one hundred overall, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. You know, there's four million podcasts in the United. You know, there's four million podcasts in the United States. Well, everyone we know has one. Let's be honest. I know we, everyone we know. So has one. we are we are ninety. We broke in. We're ninety seven, which is pretty great. Wow. Considering that we're only like three months old, and uh, and then and, and in our category, uh, we are number three out of wow. like I don't know how many in there, but hundreds, congratulations. Cool. That's, That's awesome. awesome. I don't know. Yeah, Whatever. so cool. You, see, you know, you never know how it. quick, you know, it it goes up and then it comes down yeah. at some point. So, well, but that's anyway. why you're here. So, so we can tell everybody about it and more people can come watch it and chill. Amanda, did you know Americans spend an average of 90% of their time indoors breathing around, get this, 30,000 gallons of air daily? I had no idea. Well, according to the EPA, indoor air could be two to five times more polluted than outdoor air. And in some cases, it could be 100 times more polluted That's right. And can we just talk about in Nashville, especially here in the springtime, there's pollen. We're all struggling with allergies. Everything's blooming. And on top of that, in my house, I've got so many animals. We've got cats. We've got dogs. It is mass hysteria. And we're not talking Ghostbusters here. And Air Doctor has helped us so much to keep our air clean. It smells nice. It's just an all around better situation. So what's the solution? For us, that's Air Doctor. It's an air purifier that captured the attention of established media outlets such as CNN, Money, ABC, and more. Air Doctor filters out dangerous contaminants and allergens such as pollen, pet dander, dust mites, and mold so your lungs don't have to. Their Ultra HEPA filter that's been independently tested to remove 99.99% of tested bacteria and viruses and virtually 100% of particles as small as 0.003 microns. That is tiny. They also featured the WhisperJet fan, which is so quiet. It's 30% quieter than an ordinary air purifier. And in our house, it's in the middle of our living space, and you don't even notice it. It's great. Air Doctor comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you don't love it, you just send it back for a refund. And all you have to do is pay the shipping. So head to airdoctorpro.com and use promo code WWB. Depending on the model, you receive up to 39% off or up to $300 off. That's a lot, guys. Lock this special offer by going to airdoctorpro.com. That's A-I-R-D-O-C-T-O-R-P-R-O.com and use promo code WWB. Yeah. Well, um, we're going to have you on at some point. I would love to. I would love to. Yeah, we we'll oh, talk well, about I'm, all I'm, I'm, different I'm, things. I'm, I'm, oh, yeah. We'll talk about this. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait for you to interview me. That'll be very exciting. Oh, it's going to be fun, dude. Me and the <laughs> brothers. Get ready, baby. Oh, no. Well, Matt played an episode of Melissa and Joey. Andy, was Andy on it as well? 
And he was on as well. Remember, he played the teacher. He was oh, teacher. that's right. I wasn't in the yeah. scenes with him, I think. But um, with Matt, yeah, right. Matt played yeah. my date. I was dating that's Matt. Right. And you got jealous. Was, that's right. right. That's right. Did he play your brother or just your friend? Or I forget. He played my brother, but he was, yes. But remember, it was when when you and I were not, we, we hadn't jumped together. the shark yeah. yet. So, right. So, so we had all this tension. And then he comes in and goes, wow, I'm really feeling this shit. She's amazing. And, you know, it was like, whoa, wait a minute. You know, yeah, he very gets, Joey gets yeah. very jealous. Oh. It was a fun episode for me. I got because, very jealous a little because Maddie might be my Matt might stuff. be my favorite. I'm just saying. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's the middle kids. We can't help favorite. it. It's all good. It's yeah. all good. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, I have to ask you our season seven questions. Are you ready? Jesus. Yeah, I'm ready. Do you, you have guys a, are on season seven? We are. Well, when you do one a week, it happens really quickly. It goes by, by. next year. You'll be on season seven as well. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it's true. That's crazy. It's kind of crazy. crazy. Um, yeah. Do you have a favorite cartoon? Favorite cartoon growing up? Um, I mean, probably I'm a big Looney Tunes guy. So uh. I loved Bugs, Roadrunner, all that stuff. I just absolutely loved it. I loved the orchestration, the classical music. Yeah. I think it was so, it, it was just so visceral on so many levels that. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. I mean, yeah. think about what we were exposed to as kids, dun, you know, dun, first dun, of dun. all these amazing things, but the music itself was brilliant. You yeah, know? that's really, true. Really, that's actually, you know, Mark is so obsessed with Looney Tunes. He's now got our boys. He's so sick of them watching like YouTube and TikTok that he's got them every morning on Looney Tunes at the kitchen table. Oh, that's, that's like awesome. what he's doing. Yeah. I did that. I did that with my, with my uh, girls, with Charlie and Libby. They are obsessed with Tom and Jerry, yeah. Looney Tunes, um, uh, Scooby-Doo, and all the original Disney cartoons, like, oh. like uh, uh, the Chipmunks and Chip yeah. and Dale Rescue, yeah. you know, Rescue yes. Rangers, all these things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love yeah. that. Um, yep. is there an article of clothing you can't live without? Um, you like your leather boots. I know that. I do like boots, but honestly, let me see. Article of clothing I can't live without. I'm a jeans guy, so I, I have lots of jeans. So I, I, I probably, I could live without boots in the fact I could wear sneakers or something if I had to, but jeans, like I couldn't do away with jeans, you know? Okay. All right. Um, yeah. um do you like to drive? <laughs> I think I know the answer to this one. Do you like to drive or be driven? I like to drive. I don't like yeah. being driven. I hate I being know. driven. I'm the same way. It. Yeah. But you're I a car guy. Think, I'm like, plus if you ever get in the back of a car and somebody's like got a heavy brake foot, Ugh, oh my god, I or get it smells sick. funny, I'm or yeah, I get nauseous. You're killing me. You're killing me. Yeah, we're the same people, right? But really, mm-hmm. you might be it's creepy. <laughs> creepy. I know. Um, so creepy. What was your first concert? First concert was um, I. My parents. I don't remember it, but my parents took me to see Frank Sinatra uh, in New York. When wow, I was fancy. Was that like MSG or Carnegie or? MSG. Wow. Was That's yeah. Madison Square yeah. Garden for all the, the non-New Yorkers. First concert I remember, first concert I remember was Michael Jackson at Dodger Stadium, 1983. What? Equally wow. Wow. Yeah. Both of those are ones. amazing. Dude, good I'll ones. never forget it. I mean, I was seven. I, I literally will never forget it. We didn't have great seats, but I remember I watched his glove all night, <gasps> glisten, you know, like, and the socks. So, yeah. cause he always had like the sparkles on the glove yeah. and the socks, but I just remember all night, I just remember the, you know, that tick, 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 it was so cool. I did you, so did you do Mimic Hammer or were you him for Halloween one year? I could imagine that. Oh, oh, I was obsessed. I wanted the beat it jacket so bad, <laughs> that, but I, I didn't want the fake one. My mom got me a fake one for Halloween, but I wanted the real leather one. I, and it was very expensive, you know, obviously like back yeah. then, I don't know what it was, but it was like, you know, to get a real yeah. leather beat it jacket was a lot. It's like a hundred dollars. So that was one. a lot. But I, oh, it was a lot, but I wanted one so bad. I had the penny loafers because he wore the uh, four shine yeah. mm-hmm. penny loafers and I would constantly wear my pants up with the socks. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's, I can so you know, I see little I, I Joey like that. Walk. I actually did the moonwalk. I performed at the White House uh, for the Easter egg hunt for Ronald Reagan oh. in 1986. And part of the routine I did um, was uh, let's hear it for the boys, that song by yeah. Bruce Williams. Change it to Let's Hear It for the Girls. I did my own version of it, like 86, big pop version of it. And I moonwalked in the middle of that on wow. stage. I had a stage in the backyard of the, you know, the Rose Garden White House where they had the Easter egg hunt stuff. Oh my so, God, yeah. I'm jealous. That's something that I've never really done. That is really cool. Oh, I'm going to have to add that to my bucket list of things I have to do. You also you also got to do the freaking Thanksgiving Day Parade a bunch of times. And I never got to do that because I wasn't on NBC. I know. I did it. Like I've I've done that, and I haven't done it in years. And I and I hope to do it again because it really is so much fun. You go to Tavern on the Green. It was such a great time. We saw Radio City Christmas Spectacular. We made a whole week out of it. It was like a tradition. 
But I did it like 12 years, you know, in a row. So Wow. So my things yeah. were always that I wanted to star in a movie. So I got to check that off. That I wanted to be in the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Never got to do that. But I'm okay with that now. Although it's it is not a little, over. It's still a little hurt. It's not over. I know, but Please. I can't sing. People sing in the Thanksgiving Day Parade. You don't have to sing. You can just wave. wave. Uh, there's lots wave. of just wave. Like a Pillsbury we'll one, do. maybe. I'll tell you what we'll do. NBC needs a lot of help. So especially in their half hour comedies. I mean, a lot. Yeah. So we can, we'll, we'll take Melissa and Joey reboot to NBC. I like It'll it. It'll be a ratings juggernaut for them. And part of the deal is that we have, we have to, do to the Macy's be Day at the Macy's Day Parade. Parade. Look at this. I love it. It's Although we never got together. to host the Disney Parade, even though we tried that with ABC. <laughs> uh, by the way, I still am blown away that as they're <laughs> huge, the biggest, you know, half hour comedy they ever had on their, on their cable channel. To not have you and I host that. I know, we were really mad. We kept calling ABC going, don't you need us to host your Disneyland Christmas parade? And they were like, "Uh, not this year. We're like, no, 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 you do. And they're like, well, maybe next year. And we were like, we're still like pissed about that. Look, all I'll say is, you know, it didn't work out with us and and the way that they were, you know, wanted to treat us. And so we didn't do any more for them. And then they changed the name of the network. And I'm not going to say too much. All I'm going to say is that we're bitter. Oh, wait. It's not working. (laughs) <laughs> it's not working. It's I don't even know what freeform is. I don't know what it is. I know. I know. I don't think it's for our gen. I think it's more for our, not even our kids, like our you younger mistake. siblings. They had they had the corner on you know a very diehard group of women, strong women vote. You know, watchers. Right? They were crushing it. Yeah. That eighteen to forty, you know, viewership. Everybody wants that. You were a big piece of that. Our show was a big piece of that. To give that away to go after a younger generation, and yeah. obviously, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. You know, we, I guess they, that's they got that. They had a uh, not big little lies. What was the pretty little liars? And oh, then all yeah. of a sudden, that's all they wanted was pretty little liars. That's that's the programming they were shooting for. I think. Yep. Um. All right. What show were you not allowed to watch when you were a kid? Was there a show you weren't? I wasn't allowed to watch. I love Lucy. Really? Yeah. My mom didn't think she was a role model. Really? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Especially since I kind of yeah. act like her in Mel and Melissa I know. And Joey. I wasn't allowed to watch uh, Miami Vice. Oh, oh, that must have killed you. I was, I watched it later. I got to watch, I tuned in the last season, which I believe is like 89 or 90. And then subsequently I went back, Santa Claus one year brought me all the VHSs. Oh, like when they yeah. Came out. yeah. And, and now, and now, and now I still do this day. And now you still it. watch yeah, it all the time. <laughs> it's I actually go-to. love that show. It's funny though. My parents let me watch Knight Rider and I snuck Hunter, which is a <laughs> uh, really great action com- show from like the mid eighties. With Fred Dreyer, who was a former football star, who yeah. then turned actor. Believe it or not, little little Fred Dreyer uh, trivia for all those Fred Dreyer fans out there. <laughs> he screen tested against Ted Danson and almost got the lead role in Cheers. No. Yes. Wow. And he did. They went with Ted Danson, but Fred Dreyer was on the first season of that show as the boyfriend of Shelley Long, oh. who was the antagonist in that little trifecta. Oh wow. All right, now Fred I gotta go back and watch Cheers. Badass, I know. And Hunter was awesome. Hunter was ahead of its time too. It was a male and female cop partnership. Dee Dee McCall was his partner. Oh, they drove yeah. a really cool Dodge Daytona car. It was a dope show. Hunter was great. <laughs> Way ahead of its time. <laughs> so at least you had that. At least Miami Vice didn't leave too I didn't get to watch Miami Vice and it killed me. Because you know, it was about, it had a lot to do with sex and drugs and all these things. My parents yeah. obviously didn't watch that. Miami. Like things yeah. that happen you know? in Miami. I mean, we don't want yeah. our kids going to Miami, right? So... Um, Dude, do you have a, is there a summer reading list that you have? No, I haven't had a summer reading list in years. Are I, you a I, you big, know, you're not a big man. book guy, I, are I, you? I read, I read their books, you know, with them, especially Libby and Charlie, you know, like doing book reports and, you know, so I don't, I don't have a reading list. Yeah. If, if I want to go back to a good book, I'll read like Fountainhead, which I love, Ooh. you know, um, I've read that like three or four times, but, um, you know, I don't do as much reading as I probably should. I know. I, 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 I go through seasons of it. My kid. I have seasons yeah. of it, but yeah, I can't stick with it these days. I don't know. Like to me, I got so much going on and I know like maybe I should, but like when I have a minute, like the last thing I think about doing is like, I'm going to sit on that chair and read a good book. Like I just don't, <laughs> I, 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 so many things I'll get a workout in or I got to do marketing. Like, what about or, on like, an airplane? Just, what do you do on huh? an airplane? Like, uh, on an airplane, I watch movies because okay. I like to, I download them and I, cause I don't get a chance to like zone in and watch stuff like a lot, you know? Yeah. So I like, to just, I like to just take time. I say, you know what? I'm going to do a double feature. I'm going to do movies, two yeah, movies yeah. that I haven't seen. Yeah. I catch up on all my movies. There yeah. you go. That's good. Yeah. Um, speaking of movies, is there a movie franchise that you love the most? Can I guess? Sure. Batman. 
I love Batman. I know you do. Absolutely love Batman. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I've been obsessed with, you know, wanting to play Bruce Wayne at some point because I feel like, and I'm so glad that Michael Keaton's coming, you know, is back for this Flash one because, um, you know, that they brought him back for that movie because, um, and everybody, obviously, most people are excited and have been excited about the Flash because Michael Keaton is in it. That's yeah. why. Yeah. Um, to me, he understood by far the dichotomy between Bruce Wayne and Batman. And actually, Bruce Wayne is the driver. It's not once you put on that suit, then it's anybody. But Bruce Wayne, his his dark comedy, his self-deprecation, his, you know, flaws, but not being not being like slimy, like lecherously sort of like a bachelor, but being very, very, very funny and self-deprecating. That's what makes you root for him as Batman. That's a great to way me, to put that. Yeah. No other yeah. guy has gotten that. Not one other actor has gotten that. They've done okay wow. jobs. But not my favorite Bruce Wayne by far was Michael Keaton's interpretation. I, you know what? I, I always thought this. that, but I couldn't un- explain not it. Not necessarily just- on Batman, but I'm like this about Pierce Brosnan as James oh, Bond. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, there's great Bonds. Sean Connery. Man, you know, yes. There's but amazing again, Bonds. But Pierce he Brosnan understood. is Bond. Look, all I'll tell you is one of my yeah. favorite lines from, from, from Pierce as James Bond is the end of World is Not Enough, which I love that movie. Um, but at the end, the, the doctor in that was played by Denise Richards. Her name was Christmas Jones. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And obviously that's hilarious. She's a nuclear physicist or whatever the hell she was in that. But at the end of the movie, when Bond finally gets the woman, you know, like he always does. Right. And they're, they're in bed together and they're consummating their attraction for each other. And they're panning out over the Caspian sea in this beautiful shot. And uh, she's, and she's like, Oh, James. And his last line of the movie is, you know, I thought Christmas only came once a year. Uh, that was oh. great. <laughs> yeah. It was an amazing, amazing line. So, but I've I heard agree you with say you. that before. I don't think I realized that's yeah. that's from. It's, oh, so, it's good. Fabulous. so to but to your point, that's why he's the best James Bond because mm-hmm. the 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 balance of humor, self awareness, self deprecation, and also being able to turn it on and be intense when you need to be. Yes, that's all key. that nuance. Yeah, he just embodied it. He did. Yeah. So I really hope that, look, I mean, they're, they're letting everybody under the sun play Bruce Wayne. So at some point, even though I'm, I'm getting older, I still think I could do it. Yeah. And, and that well, to me would uh, be the uh, most fun. Michael Keaton's a lot older than you. So, you know. Not. He's got 25 years on us. I mean, you know? I think that we should have Joey on all the time to bat splain everything to us. I will bat splain. should bat like <laughs> old man splain because that's no. annoying. You're going to bat splain every character on TV and film. I think that's brilliant. I think it's great. We, we've sure. got one more question sure. for you here and then we got to do this or that. Uh, sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Personal question here: What do you like to read when you're on the porcelain throne, Joey? Sports. Okay. Okay. I go to my sports apps. Sportacular. I'm obsessed. You know, a big sports guy. So I dive into the deep dives. Like you know, I, I follow all my favorite teams, and then I deep dive. Depending. But is on it the what's, what what sport in football. particular is your favorite? Is it baseball? Is it football? Is it hockey? It's my not two hockey. favorite sports are basketball and football. I like baseball but I really enjoy it uh, when it gets time for the playoffs. Uh, yeah. But I'm a big basketball football guy. Are the Eagles your guy? Your guys? The Eagles, I was at, look, uh, yes. Eagles have always been my team. Uh, I was also a massive Tom Brady fan because I love excellence over extended periods of time, which is why I was obviously a Michael Jordan fan and a Kobe fan. I just love greatness over time. I don't think anybody epitomizes that better than Tom Brady at the level mm. he was able to play at mm-hmm. for as long as he did. Um so yeah, but I was I was always a Brady fan, so I followed him and rooted for you know obviously the Patriots and then the Bucks, and but I, but but I'm an Eagles diehard fan at heart. Yeah. And in terms of basketball, grew up being a Bulls fan because of Michael. Was a Laker fan all my life because of Kobe, um, and now I'm still kind of a Laker fan. I was a Sixers. I'm a Sixer fan too, but I just love the winning culture of the Lakers. So wait, you know, so Sixers you so you used to have a tie to Auburn. I just wonder how you feel about Jalen Hurts as your quarterback over there. I, you know I know what? he's an Alabama I, boy. Yes, but but. I, my tie was my tie to the to to the Tigers was through association, obviously. Uh, so I I you know was sympathetically a fan, even though I really have no affiliation. You with don't them care at all. either I way. Don't yeah, really care one or the other. So, but Jalen Hurts is, I mean, look what he's done. He's nice. a goat. Amazing. On, yeah, he's amazing. Can and I just tell you too? A- he arguably outplayed Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. It's our defense lost that. For yes, us. it was yes. not Jalen Hurts Agreed. played better than Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I think so. Jalen Hurts. Mark keeps saying that Jalen Hurts. I think should have gotten the MVP. Like he was one. If he hadn't gotten hurt, he would have. Yeah, I just think in the in the voters' minds because he missed three games, like it didn't count. Yeah. but to me, uh, obviously, I hands down thought he deserved it. 
And I think he has an MVP in his hands in the future, oh, yeah. no doubt. He's got a he's got a, long, he's got a Brett, he's got a Tom Brady career ahead of him, I think. I, he, agree. I have to tell you he's too. He's so smart. He's so smart. When so we were smart. doing Melissa and Joey, I took my boys down to Alabama. We go to games once in a while, and yeah. we were invited into the locker room. And Jalen was there rehabbing. He had hurt his knee or something. He was standing in this thing I'd never seen. Now they have them in like all the PT places. Oh, like the anti gravity. Yeah, like a focus. belt that like inflates and pulls you up. And he's running on the treadmill and stuff. Comes over, meets my kids, nicest. Guy, There's, I have a picture of him laughing his butt off at Tucker because we know my Tucker is a fool. And Tucker's just like, he, Tucker's only like three or four and he's like making this face. He's like, ah. And Jalen's just like got his arms around Mason and Brady, but looking at Tucker and just like laughing, like, look at that kid. Not like, oh, this is annoying so in my cool. locker room. That he is so cool. So that is sweet. so cool. I love that guy because of that moment. I have to he say. seems like he's a great guy. He seems like for a young man, he's got such a great head on his shoulders. You know, you see all this stuff going on with so many young people in, in sports, you know, and obviously, yeah. you know, it's very tough to keep it all together, all that money and the fame and, and all the talent. and everything. But he has done such an incredible job. To me, you know, there is no, you're a, you're, you're, you are an adult at 18. I keep, I, I, I hate keep hearing like, oh, he's only 25. He's like, 25? Our grandparents' generation, they were saving the world at 17. They were grandparents I know. Early. Okay, but in defense of the of the the children's of the world, the kids today and in the last decade or so will never know independence Mm-mm. as teenagers like we did. Mm-mm. They will I not. Mean, they, they, will not. they can't. So, There's they a Gen can't. X page I'm going to send you, Joey. I'll show it to you, too. There's a woman who does all this Gen X stuff, and she talks about why we're so cool. And I'm going to share it with that. you guys because she is will, hilarious. She has a, she has we a great are, philosophy. We're cool. I, I, I will definitely read it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now yeah. we have to, oh, we're going to oh. do a this or that, and then we're going to ask you uh, how many unread emails you have in your inbox. <laughs> okay. You can get with I this. Bet, I bet he's team Melissa that. on this one. Okay. Broadway or movies? Movies. Winter or summer? Summer. Brunch or happy hour? Brunch. Sugar or fake sugar? Sweetener. Oh, I, I'm a real sugar guy. I don't do any of that fake crap. Very good. <laughs> Sitcom or drama? Sitcom all day. I, I prefer to laugh. I think it's harder to make people laugh. So when you universally make people laugh, yeah. I feel like that requires a much superior skill set because because being sad is universally accepted like death, you know, you know, murder, these, 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 these things, you know, sickness, they all make us feel things. But humor is so specific that when you can do it across a platform, I think that takes a greater skill set personally. I agree. Awesome. CSI or law and order? Uh, I prefer Law and Order. Vinyl or streaming? Oh, vinyl all day. <laughs> classics or new releases? Well, you know, I have to go with the classics because they're just better. I mean, the new stuff has <laughs> not been as good. There's a reason and, they're classics. All yeah, right, so mean, that- honestly, I don't think a lot of the new stuff will ever become classics. That's my opinion. I And I talk about this all the time. Like, I don't see, especially in music, like, where's Tina Turner and Prince and Michael and... Aerosmith and where yeah. I mean where are these people because in 20 years well some of them are already like Juice people. World they're already like dead like a lot of these guys like, have already oh, well, passed away like so a early. lot of these artists today that I know my daughters love okay they love them and they're they're fine they're good I just don't think in 20 or 30 years that we are going to be talking about them like we talk about the people that we were blessed enough to but wait with. Joe like, are you a Swifty I like Taylor Swift she's okay she's good look Taylor Swift is good because she's been able to accumulate a series of, of uh, you, you know, very recognizable songs over many albums. So that's mm-hmm. a great testament to her, you know? Um, you know, I, yeah, she's she's good. I have no problem with Taylor Swift. I just Swift. ask you that because you have girls and I don't have. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, you once yeah. told me that your house was covered in glitter. Is it still covered in glitter or are we through that phase right now? Well, we were through it. You know, and now so, he's right now back you're where he started. You got, you, got a, you got a good five years. So kindergarten comes around and they start. Oh, the glitter in, starts baby. young. Diving back in. <laughs> um, okay, we have to ask you the most personal question, which is how many unread emails are in your inbox? Well, let me let me check I that little red email, dot on your. App. I'll tell you right now. Let me see. I, I I'm kind of crazy about unread emails. I something drives me boggles my mind when I look at a friend's phone and they have like 4,000 oh, emails. I'm like, oh, what do you want to hear how many? Wait, listen to Amanda's. Amanda, what's how you that? Just, ahead, I'm so ready under, to throw me under the bus every list, time. I, I'm sure it's somewhere around 30,000 by now. What? Am no. I right? <laughs> no, girl, are you serious? It's 24,000. 24,000, 24, Joe. I have 97. Wait, unread? Okay, but I explain this every time, but it's a system. <laughs> 
<laughs> I read my emails constantly. I'm always checking. I love my that emails. I make her defend this. Someday you're just gonna clean it up so that people don't are you just shocked love by your number. This. You love this. Where are they? Like, like you just face. you just never file them or you just never right. junk them? I mean, so it would take you I only, to put all that just in junk. You know, <laughs> in the trash. It would at least, yeah. Once I deleted them all for Melissa, and this is actually the restart. So Yeah. This is a restart. Well, okay, from right a year now, ago. to put that in perspective, I have I'll tell you exactly how many I have because I'm opening my phone. Uh, let me see here. Go into my I have um, 24. 24. That's a good number. I like to keep it. I like to keep it around 30, but mine, I'm close to a hundred now, which is making me well, that's crazy. A, that's I, I do too. Any point in the day, I've, I've already cleared out a, a lot of them. You know, when I wake up, I don't look at my phone first thing. Cause people say it's terrible to like roll over and look at your phone. So I don't yeah. do that. I get up and I have breakfast and I spend time with the family, do that stuff. And then like an hour or so in, I'll, I'll start going through emails and I try to get rid of a lot of them, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I only open the ones that are important. The yeah, rest she I just the leave. rest and then leaves them there, which makes me crazy. I'm like, that little red number that's bigger than no. the app? Like, it's like, no. Joe, it's like longer than the app. It's like, I mean, it literally no, goes it's across. like the same size. It's just catty cornered to the app. I just can't. Mm -hmm. no. so my, my, my brain would go, would explode. Yeah. I, I can't, I, I, can't, I couldn't see that. I would get nervous. I'd feel like I have so much to do. You That's know, fine. Like that. I have four <laughs> phone calls right now, and I know I have to go make those phone calls because I have oh, to get I that I've off missed, of my plate. I right always now. miss phone right. calls while we're in here. No, I'm the same way. I'm the same way. Like, not to mention, I have to respond to emails. Like, when they come in, I have to deal with it because yeah. if I leave too many up there, I'm afraid one of them will fall through the cracks, and yeah. they always inevitably do if I leave too many. Yeah. you know, unread or and by the way, it's just, okay. Like the world won't end, but right, it know. is. It is, uh, and I do. It, it does make me crazy. It's too. very rare for me to miss a correspondence that I need to take care of. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty well, good she was about the that. PTA president for a while, so she knows how to handle that stuff. It's just it's shocking that she like lets that this doesn't drive you nuts. There's yeah. so many other things, things in that life drive you nuts that I need to focus yeah. on. Yeah, <laughs> that's you know, true. Some, some people don't see like you know, haphazard pillows on a couch as chaos. Other people see it that way. It's not even OCD. It's just, Ooh, that's me. Is that me? I, literally, I swear to God, like I've talked to my therapist about this, like, because people, I'm like a big neat guy. I'm a, like a neat person, but I'm I not think you're, OCD. Are you OCD? No, I'm not. I just really prefer order. Right. So if I see a counter, like if I'm going to take out stuff to cook, I put it all away. I'm not the guy that like, when I'm done with this cup, I'll just leave it here when I can just put it away. Cause I I'm done. Like I don't yeah. need to leave it out. Because at the end of the day, and you know, inevitably you have six cups out. You know, your coffee cup, you have your this cup, you have it, and you're thinking like, why can't I just put it away? Why do I leave shit in the sink when I could just literally put it in the dishwasher? This is like this is why I have another house. I have my house in L.A. mainly because it's an investment, but I have my house in L.A. And when I go out to work and it's just me, and I put everything in the sink in the dishwasher, and it stays there, and the pillow I fluff on the couch, and I make my bed, and like it's all you know, Mark gets out of the bed, it's torn apart. It's torn apart, and I don't understand what he's doing when he's sleeping because he's right next to me, and it doesn't wake me up. Oh, I know I, it. I know I don't it well. It. Yeah. So when my yeah, husband I leaves, I literally just leave his part of the bed made. Yeah. And I, by the time I wake up in the morning, like, it's— Nothing's moved. Nothing's moved. I can pull the sheet up like this, I and it's I make up fine. my half of the bed again, yeah. and it's— When everything I sleep by myself, perfect. I do the exact same thing. Exactly yeah. same thing. Yeah. yeah. I like I like my order, too. That's a good way to put it. You should look yeah. into—I read this book called Mindset or Mindsets. Mindset. Yeah. Okay. Growth mindset okay. or fixed mindset. And so I don't know if this means we're a fixed mindset in this way. Like, I feel like it's a, a level of OCD. You are both fixed yeah. mindset. You think we're fixed? Yeah, I no, I think, we're, I think we're both growth. You know what? You in know most what areas. I'm okay with it. Like, I'm okay with that being an element that makes me feel organized in my mind. Yeah. Like, that gives me peace. You know, yeah. to see that dopamine hit. It gives me peace. And, I, and I'll go around and I'll straighten up after people. And they'll be like, oh, my God, you don't need to do that. I'm like, no, I'm not doing it for you. I'm actually doing it for me. And don't That's, feel bad. I'm always I'm clearing a table at a restaurant. To send a message. <laughs> yeah. I'm just doing it because I need it clean. Like at a restaurant, know? I'm the one that gathers the menus to make sure I hand them back in one piece. Or I'm the one, like, collecting oh, the napkins. Yes. Give me your napkins. Don't drop them on the floor. Let's put all the ketchup me packets too. on the plate, you know. I'm me like, just too. put, and, you know, me waiters too. will come over and be like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't clean that up. I'm like, no, no, no. I just wanted to get it all together. Well, you said <laughs> sofa pillows, and I am that person who needs to have many decorative pillows. I love decorative pillows. But my children destroy them. Just throw them everywhere. Yeah, it makes me crazy. Oh, and so like, I yeah, constantly go through pillows. and. These are, these are decorative. These are here to look good. We're not supposed to trash these. Yeah, I know. I know. I, know. I walked I, in I, the other day, I, and my dog is laid across like a pile of them. Like she, oh no. she nested on top of them, and I was like, no, that's the worst. That's why I don't like my kids to play with pillows because the animals will get on them and then it's just destroyed. They, uh, well, thank you, Joe, for being here. Yo, that was a fast hour, man. It's been so it was fun because so we're just chitty chatty like we have always been. It. It's great. Since we were four Perfect. years it's old. So 
with you today. I loved it. Yeah, thank you. And uh, we'll, we'll make sure everybody checks out your Brotherly Love podcast. They can find it everywhere. Spotify, everywhere. Apple, yeah, YouTube, absolutely. all everywhere. the things. Everywhere. And they can check out your, uh, Insta- your Instagram and the Brotherly Love podcast Instagram, right? Yeah. To yes, Brotherly track. Love pod. Yep, that's right. That's Very right. That's going right. at it right now. Well, I'll see you soon, my friend. Thanks for being here. We will. Have safe travels. I love you. Thank and you. Yes, love you too. to have you on our show. And, uh, and Say we'll, hi to your uh, brothers and your mama. We have to revisit something, whether it's whether it's the movie or the show. We well, have so to you do call something. Peacock. Call your buddies over at Peacock and let's get on there. Everywhere I go, people are like, you guys have to do it. I would so, love like, it. I feel like we need to do something. All right, let's do I it. Well, will I see you at 90s Con in Tampa? Uh, I might be there. All right, yes. try to be there. Try to be there. Matt will be there for sure because he's doing oh, okay. a Boy Meets World thing. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I might be there. I might be there. All right. So, All right, right love you, kid. So text me or All call right. me. I will. I will. I will blow you up as well, uh, especially when we're trying to knock down this uh, date for you to come on our show. Okay? Of course, of course. All right. We'll talk soon. All right, ladies. Bye.